This shop looks popular today. Wonder what the occasion is. Hmm. Butterfly Goo Cosmetics now on sale. Huh, looks like it. Oh, Seedwing's here too! Hey there, Seedwing! Hello there, Traveler and Paimon. I hope you're keeping yourselves fit and healthy. You bet we are! So anyway, what are you doing here, Seedwing? The Duke insists I take regular vacations in the Court of Fontaine. This one just so happened to coincide with a promotion for a new skincare product, so I came over to take a look. I like to keep up with the latest industry developments when I can, to help me with my magazine articles. Wait, you write? For a magazine? Which one? It's called Beauté's en Fleur, and it's run by the Fontaine Beauty Association. I've done lots of articles about skincare for them, using the pen name Romaritime Flower. Oh, wow! You're a Maritime Flower? If Paimon's not mistaken, you're one of the leading figures in the Fontaine Beauty Association! Uh, what, what's so weird about that? Everyone loves beauty! I really like this role. The staff at cosmetic shops are always so polite. And as long as I wear a big smile on my face, I always get the best customer service. Well, they sure don't want to make an enemy of the Romaritime Flower! Obviously, it's because of Seedwing's love for beauty! Still a leader of the Beauty Association? That's incredible! The truth is, I study this field because I cherish my own appearance. It has nothing to do with being beautiful or not. Oh, the words of a master beautician defy comprehension! Oh, wait, you're saying that natural beauty is the highest form of beauty, right? Not really. Actually, Melisy and aesthetics are very different from human ones. We don't view humans based on their appearance. If I had to describe our approach, I'd say it's based on... cuteness. Oh! Really? Yep. Still, I really value my current appearance. And in the process of taking care of it, I've ended up learning quite a lot about skincare and stuff. It turns out, my knowledge and experience is pretty popular with beauty product lovers. It came as a big surprise to me, though. Oh, Paimon gets it now! But speaking of your... appearance, how come you look human anyway? Are you like... Only half melazine? Ooh, wait, sorry, sorry! That was probably really offensive, wasn't it? No, I don't mind. I'm not mixed, though. I made a decision to turn myself into this form a very long time ago. If you're interested, I could tell you the story. A shape-shifting story? Oh, heck yeah, of course we're interested! <clears throat> Once upon a time... Long ago, humans rejected Melazines, and Melazines feared humans. There was one Melazine who became fascinated with human medicine, but no human wanted her help. And there was one girl who liked Melazines, so no humans would make friends with her. So the Melazine became the girl's friend, and the girl became the Melazine's patient. Mm hmm. Your checkup's all done. You're still in perfect health. <sighs> Thank you, Dr. Melazine. <laughs> <laughs> In this game of doctor and patient, a friendship was born. Then, one day, the girl fell ill. The Melazine was the only doctor to arrive on time, but the adult sent her away. Scram! Melazines can't be trusted! <sighs> so 
just because I'm not human. I can't save my best friend. In desperation, the Melazine approached the frightening witch. She begged and begged until she got a reply. If you take this potion, concocted of sin, you will gain a human face and grow human limbs. But then, you will lose everything that attracted this friend of yours to you in the first place. Can you accept that? The Melazine did not hesitate for very long. <clears throat> on a rainy night, a little doctor knocked on the girl's door. The doctor wore a hood and raincoat. Maybe to protect her from the rain, but maybe also to hide a secret. The little doctor held the girl's hand and treated her illness, just as she had so many times before. Dawn came, and the little girl's condition improved. But the little doctor was long gone, for she knew her friend would never recognize her again. And so, since then, I've lived my life in human form. Most people who know me just think I was born this way. Ooh. A witch? A potion? Why does this sound like a fairy tale? Trust me, it's a true story. Must be the way you told it then. It just sounds so... Uh... <sighs> yeah! Not every Melazine would take human form to save their human friend! That must have been a huge decision. Treating patients is a doctor's duty. We must always find a way, even when the going gets tough. <sighs> It's so crazy that they turned you away just because you were a Melazine! Especially when their daughter was so sick! Well... Sometimes appearance can be a real barrier. But that was a long time ago. I like how I look now, anyway. I'm on too! You're super cute this way! Attention customers! Thank you all for waiting. Now, on behalf of our skincare partner, I'm delighted to announce that our exciting new product is now officially on sale! Wow, there we go! Let's have a look, shall we? Paimon, if you want to buy any skincare products, I'll be happy to give you some suggestions! Really? Personal advice right from a leader of the Fontaine Beauty Association? What an honor! Allow me to introduce our newest skin lotion. Butterfly Dew. I'm sure many of you have already read about this product's trials in the newspapers. To say that it improves skin quality is an understatement. This product gets its name from the way it transforms your skin and makes it glow anew, like a butterfly emerging from its chrysalis and spreading its wings for the first time. We are thrilled to have the inventor of this fantastic product with us here today. Please welcome Mr. Rawat, a researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute. Now, without further ado, I'll hand over to Mr. Rawat to tell you all about what Butterfly Dew can do for you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Rawat, and I developed Butterfly Dew. Wow, what a looker. He's a researcher? Well, he's really challenging the stereotype. <laughs> it seems that everyone is surprised by my entrance. Or should I say, my appearance. I'm well aware that researchers are generally better known for their brains than their dashing good looks. In that regard, I do believe I break the mold somewhat. Of course, appearance is a skin-deep way of defining a person. And yet one's appearance can be a very real set of shackles pulling a person back in their life. It can rob a young person of their self-confidence when applying for a job, dissuade a young lady from approaching the one she loves. Our actions are at the mercy of our appearance, and we slowly become the very person that the outside world sees us as. Hmm. 
But what if I told you that those shackles can be broken? If our appearance prevents us from changing, then let us first change our appearance itself. Wash away moles, birthmarks, and wrinkles, and they can no longer rob us of our confidence. Replace them with luster and radiance, and we shall never again hang our heads in shame. That is why Butterfly Dew exists. Its mission is to allow us to shed our pupae, undergo a complete metamorphosis, and embrace a new life. Well, whether it actually works or not, after that speech, Paimon's already sold! Uh, Mr. Rawat, could I ask if you've used this product yourself? Of course, I tried it many times while I was testing it. You can consider me a product ambassador. Wow, then it's sure to work! Still, I don't expect to convince you just by blowing my own trumpet. So, could I get a volunteer from the audience to try it out? Oh, hi, my volunteers! Hmm? Oh! Ah, oh, what an honor! It appears we have a giant of the Fontaine Beauty Association here with us. In that case, Miss Sijuin, could we seek your most expert opinion on this product? Is that Romaritime Flower? They say she's the pickiest user of skincare products in all of Fontaine. Here you go. Hmm. Well, it's very kind to the skin, and the absorption rate is high. Even for Fontaine, this is a first-rate product. Wow, now that's high praise! I'll take uh, one! Any too. discounts? Alright. Well, all that remains for me to say is... Butterfly Dew is now on sale! Think we should buy a bottle too? Aww, <laughs> really? Well, it's still good to care for your skin though, right? Paimon definitely feels kinda rough from being exposed to the elements all the time. And if you're worried about whether it's the right product for you, well, luckily for us, Seedream's here, so we can get an expert consultation. It's an honor to receive such high praise from you. To be honest, I was also hoping you might be able to point out some flaws in the product so I can keep improving it. With most skincare products, the pros and cons only become apparent with long-term use. Oh yeah, this one has instant benefits. Improving skin quality without any obvious side effects. It's one of a kind. Don't worry though, I plan to keep using it. And I'll publish regular reviews in Beauté Sans Fleur. You can read my thoughts there. All you need to do is subscribe. Oh, I was hoping for a more casual conversation, but you are a beauty association leader after all. I understand if you want to keep this professional. Sea Dream? Oh, um, <laughs> excuse us, Miss Beauty Expert. But do you think this product is a good choice for me and him? Hmm? Wait, are you the renowned traveler? That's right, and by his side, the equally famous Paimon. <laughs> well, I don't normally handle customer questions personally, but since it's the traveler asking, allow me to make an exception. Butterfly Dew is made for all skin types, so no matter who you are, you can rest assured that it will be kind to your skin. If anything, it might be marginally more effective on Fontanian's skin, but other than that, it works the same on everyone. Why would it work better on Fontanian's? Um, in the interests of protecting my trade secrets, I'm afraid I can't answer that, Miss Paimon. Uh, all right then. How about a friend discount? Save yourself the trouble. I'd be greatly honored to have both of you use my product. Here, take two bottles for free. Yay! Paimon's private fund survives! <laughs> 
I can see why you might think that, but please don't misunderstand. This gift is simply a token of my esteem. There's no business motivation behind it. To me, finding new customers for Butterfly Dew is about meeting kindred spirits, fellow admirers of physical beauty. I consider it a labor of love. Admirers of physical beauty? Eesh, that's embarrassing to say out loud. It sounds so shallow. It's nothing to be ashamed of, Miss Paimon. Most people claim to desire inner virtue, but it's still physical appearance that turns their heads. This is a fact of life. It's only natural for people to desire to become beautiful. And that's exactly what inspired me to choose this research direction in the first place. You're right. Everyone loves beauty, don't they? Ah, look at the time. My apologies, but I have other things to attend to. I'll leave you with these two bottles of butterfly dew, and I look forward to seeing you again. Paimon, I'd say there's no need for you and the Traveler to use this product for now. Uh, why? Is there a problem with it? The quality is fine. I just think there's room for improvement. I think I could add some ingredients to the mix to make it more effective. Really? Then why didn't you tell Rewat about that? Researchers are a very special breed of human. You can point out their flaws to their face and they won't mind very much. But if you tell them that someone else could do a better job, ooh, now that'll make them really upset. If I'd mentioned it, he probably wouldn't have given you those two bottles for free. Ah, huh, fair enough, that makes sense. If you're interested in the more effective version, I can write up a list of ingredients for you. Just come get me once you've gathered them. When you say more effective, you mean it'll make Paimon even prettier? Ooh, how can we say no? As for me, it's probably time I got back to the Fortress of Meripede. I mustn't leave the infirmary unattended for too long. Alright, see you there then! Just up ahead, Traveler! The ingredients for Sea Dream should be nearby! Solidify! Ready!
A duel is a battle of wills, and the sword an extension of the duelist's spirit. If your heart recoils in fear, then your sword may as well be in its scabbard, because you will not wield it effectively against your foe. have to believe me. I saw it with my own eyes last night. Another me! He looked exactly like me. Got it? Okay. I've written down everything you told me. Now, I have a few tests to run. Take a deep breath and don't worry. It's nothing to be nervous about. First, which finger am I holding up? Your index finger, but I'm telling you, my mental state is fine. I'm not crazy. Very good. Now, on to the next. Hey there! Your Grace, it's been a while, huh? Ah, it's you too. Indeed it has. I would offer you some tea, but I'm afraid the timing is unfortunate. Duty calls. No worries. Actually, we were looking for Seedween. Do you, uh, know what all of this is about? This inmate came running to the guards in a panic, claiming to have seen his exact doppelganger. A doppelganger? Doesn't that just mean someone else kind of looks like him? And that's what I thought when the report first reached my desk. But we've inspected our records. No one even vaguely resembles him. Considering how certain he is of what he saw, I can only surmise that he's having some mental issues. So I brought him for a medical evaluation. Alright, very good. Take a sip of water and rest for a bit. Evaluation complete. I couldn't find any symptoms pointing to a physical condition. I see. So, do you still believe there's more likely to be an issue with his mind than his body? I have to assume so for now. Psychological issues are more difficult to detect. At this stage, we can at least confirm that he is in command of his cognitive faculties. The rumor mill will go crazy if word of this gets out. Guards, take him to the ward for a period of observation. The Mara Chose Phantom has requested my cooperation on a case, otherwise I'd deal with this myself. Sorry for the trouble, head nurse, but I'll have to leave this to you. No problem, Your Grace. I'll add him to my observation list. By the way, we have a couple of guests here who have made the trip just to see you. I imagine it must be important. You probably won't need to add them to your observation list, though. Oh, Traveler! Paimon, it's you! It's actually not that important, but... I'll be in my office if you desperately need me. Goodbye for now. Okay, bye-bye! So, uh, Sea Dream... Would you mind waiting for just a moment? I have another patient to see. Uh, just find an empty bed and take a seat. I won't be long. Oh, sure! Sijuin, we've brought him. And he seems to have taken a turn for the worse again. Okay, don't panic. Let's start by sitting him down here. Paimon had no idea how busy it can get for Sijuin. Maybe now's not the time to ask for her help with skincare. Good point. Besides,
Besides, it might actually be interesting to observe her at work. Well, this could hurt, so I suggest you take a deep breath first. Did his face melt? What happened to him? It's anyone's guess. His face melted off shortly after arriving at the fortress. But since he's a serious offender, he can't be allowed out for medical treatment. Best we can do for now is ask the head nurse to give him something to manage the symptoms. Oh, this is gonna be awkward. We still need to bring him to the Marashose Phantom for questioning. What if he scares them half to death? Will that be our fault? The Marashose Phantom? Does this have something to do with the case Risley's dealing with? Yep, it was a huge case. They bagged a few dozen crooks in one fell swoop. And this guy's the baddest apple of the bunch. He harmed countless people. And now, it looks like it's all finally catching up with him. You done gawking? Not yet. I need to check the severity of your ulcers to decide the right dosage. <sighs> Don't worry. We Melazines have a very different sense of aesthetics from humans. To me, he just looked like a little kitty with slightly scruffy fur, but still just as cute. Don't patronize me. Do I look like a kid to you? Just give me the meds and let me out of here. I already missed my cell. Hey, lose the attitude. You dare talk back to our head nurse like that again? Your days are numbered. Oh, it's fine. Okay, I'm going to apply the medication now. Tell me if it hurts, all right? Look how nice Seedwing's being. And he still talks to her like that? What a nasty piece of work. Can I leave now? Wow, not a peep. What a brave little guy. Thank you, Seedwing. And I apologize for the trouble. Uh, so, Traveler, Paimon, did you bring the ingredients? Uh, we did, but we don't want to interfere or anything. You're busy saving lives here. Oh, don't be silly. I agreed to it, didn't I? Just hand me the ingredients, and I'll make some time to whip it into the improved version for you. Take a rest here if you want. Or, if you're not tired, I hear they're holding a new pancreation tournament in the administration area. Um, or alternatively, is there anything we could help you with, Seedwing? That's right! Let us help you out! It's the least we could do! Hmm... Good point. Kind-hearted humans start to develop guilt if they accept free help from others. Mm, don't worry. I'll take a look at my schedule. I'm sure I can find something to treat this condition. I gotta warn you though, it'll be tiring work. So I suggest you take a break first, then come back and see me when you're ready. We're ready, Seedween! What's our first mission? <laughs> I found the perfect job for the Traveler. First, I'd like you to lie down in this bed. Uh, what for? I need you to pretend to be sick. What? Oh, is it that difficult? I thought you did a pretty good job last time. Oh, so you knew. I sure did. He was way more interesting than the usual malingering inmates. And you played along very well, Paimon. I observed you two for quite a while after that. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> but why do you need us to do it again now? Uh, no time to explain. My next patient will be here any second. Oh, please, just do as I say. You can, uh... Pretend like you've got a nasty headache. And throw in some dry heaving for good measure. Uh, okay! <laughs> hey, Doc. It's me. I'm only here because my mom won't stop pestering me about it. <sighs> so annoying. Well, your mother has enough on her plate with a busy job. Well, the last thing she needs is to worry about you being sick as well. I know, I know! 
I shouldn't treat the place like a playground. Shouldn't go swimming in the lower levels where we join up with the sea, because it'll give me a cold and distract her from her work. I thought I'd be able to have some fun here at the fortress for a few days, but it's always, don't do this and don't do that. All right. Sit yourself down and I'll take your temperature. Hmm. Your fever still hasn't gone down. Well, here's your medicine. One cup for starters, and we'll see if it helps. But, Doc, it's so bitter. Do I really have to drink it? I mean, I'll be fine, right? I've got an uncle who caught a cold. His fever went away on its own after a couple days. Can't you just write me a note saying I'm on the mend? I just need something to keep my mom off my case. Hmm, I sure can. You're a very brave boy, after all. Huh? Brave? What makes you say that? Well, if you want to rely on your own immune system to clear up your fever, then you'll have to tough it out like this guy. Hang in there, Traveler! Are you gonna puke? Paimon can get you a paper bag! Uh, huh? As long as you're tough enough to get through the nausea and dizziness caused by the high fever, you'll be right as rain after just a few days' rest. And... if I'm... not tough enough? Hey! Hey! Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> Put it this way, at least you'll never have to see the doctor again, right? I... uh... I think maybe I'll take that medicine after all, if that's okay. Oh, of course. Here, it's still warm. Uh, uh, it's so bitter. Oh. <laughs> all done. Great job, you two. That kid really doesn't know what's good for him. His mother's a guard here. She's been working back-to-back -back shifts lately. But, unfortunately, his father's away on a business trip right now. She had no choice but to bring her son here for the time being. He was quite happy at first. <sighs> he seemed to think that the Fortress of Meripede would be all fun and games. So you made us put on that act just to scare a kid into taking his medicine? That's a pretty sneaky trick. Seems like there's a whole side to Siege we never knew about. <laughs> it's a technique I learned from my teacher. Oh, you had a teacher? Was she a melazine doctor too? Mm, she was human. She passed away a long time ago. Oh, sorry. No, oh, it's fine. I really liked my teacher, so it's always nice when I get to talk about her with other people. She was a traveling doctor, and since she didn't have a clinic, she'd go out and visit her patients wherever they were. Dealing with the badly behaved ones was her specialty. <laughs> she used to say, Ahem. If you can scare the little brats into taking their medicine, you won't have to hear them wailing and screeching when their condition gets worse. Huh, she sounds like a pretty strict teacher. Oh, strict? Well, that's not how my teacher saw it. She thought of herself as terrifying to kids. Strange way for a doctor to describe themselves. Now Paimon's curious to know what she looked like. Uh, oh, as it happens, I actually have a picture of her. Oh, wow, yeah, okay, that'll terrify the kids. Yep, all the children she treated thought she was a witch. Why does it almost sound like you're envious of her? Oh, because I am. If she was here, all the children would take their medicine without any need for tricks. A doctor who looks like a witch. True, they wouldn't dare try anything funny with her around. <laughs> oh, me, on the other hand, it's hopeless. Children aren't afraid of me at all. That's actually a good thing, you know? Oh, my next patient should be arriving now. Would you mind lending me a hand again? Sure thing! 
Ping, on to the next mission. Ah, is it night time already? That flew by. You really have a busy job, Seedween. Well, thanks to you two, it was much easier today. Aww. <laughs> Should we get some rest? It's getting pretty late. Oh, uh, there is one last thing. I have to keep it confidential, so I usually leave it till after everyone's clocked out. Confidential? Are you sure you can tell us? It's fine. You're not living here anymore, so it's okay if you know. All it is, is I have to prepare some ingredients to make healthy meals with. Wait, you mean... those healthy meals? <sighs> My patients refuse to eat any healthy meals I prepare in front of them, so I have to prep the ingredients in secret, then let the chef at the coupon cafeteria handle the rest. Considering even the chef's version makes people uneasy, it really makes you wonder what's in it. You wanna find out? I can teach you how to make it. That way, if you ever suffer from exhaustion on your future travels, you can prepare a healthy meal for yourself. It's really good for you, you know. Um... Sure? Guess we can help out one more time. The ingredients are ready. Uh, now, put them on the table and add them in the order I tell you. First, we add this special slime condensate. Stir it thoroughly, then pour it in. Oh, see that? It adds elasticity. It looks just like tasty jelly, doesn't it? Uh, yeah! Yeah, it really does! Until you remember it's slime condensate. Next up, xenochromatic crystals. You want to crush them up into a fine powder, like powdered sugar. Wait, are those from Font of Our Aberrants? Are you sure they're edible? Finally, we'll need some high-protein meat. Frogs are an excellent choice. Uh, you just need to clean their innards, and then you're left with some lovely tender meat. Oh! Frogs. Uh. Mm -hmm. And we're done. All that's left now is to pack them into lunchboxes and hand them to Walsy. Yesterday in the production zone, I noticed an inmate who's been working for two days straight. That means it's a healthy meal for him tomorrow. Sea Dream really does have the inmate's best interests at heart. Ah, head nurse. <laughs> Got some extras for me? Just the one today. The serial number's on the lid. Sounds good. I'll make sure it gets delivered. Sounds like they're talking in code. Thanks for your help. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I only wish I could do more. You work so hard for all our sakes. I'd happily lose a little sleep if it meant helping you out. If you reduce your sleeping hours any further, your health will start to suffer. Hmm, all right. Nurse's orders. I'll do as I'm told. But you take care of yourself, too. Well, I'm done with work for today. Thanks for helping out, you two. Seems like the guards and staff here have a lot of respect for you, Sea Dream. In just one day of helping you with your work, it feels like we've done a lot for the fortress. Uh, head nurse, please, wait. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you this late at night, but uh, I think you'll agree, this is urgent. Okay, just relax and catch your breath. What's the matter? 
The guard at the observation ward, Odalon, he told me to pass on a message to you. Uh, one of the inmates there, the guy suffering from possible hallucinations, well, he seems to have made a sudden recovery, and now he wants to apply for permission to leave the ward. Huh? Already? <sighs> you were right to tell me. I'll have to examine him and make sure he's well before we discharge him. Looks like we've got one job as medical assistants left. We'll come with you. Ah, head nurse, you're finally here. I'm so sorry for all the trouble I've caused you, but I believe I've now made a full recovery. After giving it some thought, I'm sure that I was probably just seeing things. It's stress-related, I imagine. I'd been working long hours, so I definitely wasn't in the best state of mind. I totally understand. Still, I have to give you an examination before I can discharge you, okay? So, take a deep breath and don't be nervous. It'll be the exact same procedure as we did this morning. We can start whenever you're ready. Uh, again, so sorry. I was in such a state this morning, I barely recall anything. Would you mind taking me through it again? Oh, not at all. It's a lot to remember. First up, we have a little cognitive test. Just concentrate and you'll be fine. To start with, which finger am I holding up? Your pinky. All right. All indicators seem normal. So it was a stress-induced hallucination after all? Well, we've certainly had previous cases of mental illness caused by overwork, which is why I carefully observe everyone in the production zone. <sighs> I wonder how I managed to miss the signs this time. Please, head nurse, you shouldn't blame yourself. I'm just still adapting, that's all. Pushed myself too hard, and I guess I couldn't take it. Thanks for looking after me. I'll be as good as new after a good night's sleep. And if you can give me the okay, I know I'll sleep better back in my good old dorm. Hmm. It can be difficult to relax in an unfamiliar environment. All right, then. You can leave the ward. I suggest you take two days off to focus on your recovery. I'll take you off the observation list for now. So, you're officially discharged. Great. I can't thank you enough, head nurse. Mr. Odilon, could you escort him back? Of course. I'm on guard duty in the administrative area tonight, so nothing will go wrong. You have my word. Guess you're finally done for the day now, huh? Yep. Uh, oh, but I still haven't gotten around to making that improved lotion for you yet. Oh, no rush! Seriously, it's super late now. You should go get some rest, too. Well, tomorrow it is, then. Good night, Traveler. Good night, Paimon. Hope you sleep well. Oh, don't you worry! We will! After a productive day of work, we're both gonna sleep like a log. Yeah, sleep tight, Sea Dream. See you tomorrow. did sleep like a log. Let's go find Sea Dream. Busier than yesterday. 
yesterday. Uh, good morning, Traveler and Paimon. Uh, I have a few people here for a checkup, so you might need to wait for a while. No problem. Anything we can do to help? Uh, there's a bit of a complicated situation here. I'm still getting to the bottom of it myself. You have to believe me. I'm telling the truth. Hmm. You're in a medical facility. Keep it down. Please, listen to me. I'm not Gascon. I'm Ui. You're a horrible liar, you know that? We get all your mugshots with the arrest warrants. It's clear as day that you're Gascon. You mean because of the way I look? I don't know what happened. I just woke up like this. Then you guys dragged me in here for an interrogation. I brought you here to figure out what's going on. If you truly are the victim of an injustice, yelling isn't going to achieve anything. At most, it'll delay your vindication. <sighs> All right. <sighs> I get it. This is nuts. Yesterday's interrogations went fine. And now this. Morning, Your Grace. What's going on? Remember the case I mentioned yesterday? The one brought to me by the Mara Shosei Phantom? Well, we've been questioning the inmates involved this morning. Every single one of them is claiming mistaken identity. Huh. That's even weirder than what that guy was saying yesterday! The thing is, none of them have been able to provide any evidence whatsoever to support their claims. Questioning them further got us nowhere, so for now, we've brought them to the infirmary. And we thought yesterday was as busy as it got for Siegeween. We've compiled their statements. Have a look. Perhaps there's something we missed. Wait. Release? Interesting. The inmates they spoke of in their statements appear to all be due for release today. Hmm. I noticed that too. If that's their plan, they're underestimating us a little. Every serious offender claims that there's someone else who just so happens to be due for release today. And they're expecting us to go along with that. All the more reason to be cautious. Lumberzar, check the release list for today and make sure no one gets processed. We're gonna need an excuse, though. Mm, just say we're out of forms, and that we're furiously printing more as we speak. I'm on it. It's conceivable that our group of serious offenders somehow found a way to switch places with inmates who are about to be released, so they can walk out right under our noses. We did consider that possibility. But I mean, just look at them. They match the warrants, period. How could there have been a switch? Mm, only if they're dead ringers for the inmates due for release, I suppose. I gave you that name list yesterday to assist in your investigation. Did that help? Yes, the inmates' mugshots were attached to the list. The first thing I did was check for lookalikes, and I didn't find any. The only other thing that stands out to me is that their voices sound a little different today. But it's not exactly hard to put on a fake voice. Oh, really? Hmm. What does our head nurse make of all of this? Uh, give me a moment. I think I have a way to confirm whether there's been a switch. I know, it's not time to change your dressing yet, uh, but please bear with me. Huh? Isn't that the guy from yesterday? Uh, this should be Honore. He has very severe facial ulcers, which require an operation in the hospital at the Court of Fontaine. I authorized him to leave the fortress for medical treatment under guarded escort. Yes, like I told you. I'm not Potten. I'm Honore. So there has been a swap. Well, I can see what happened in Potten's case. But how do you explain the other inmates? You're not telling me their... Souls switched bodies. Are you? No, I believe it was their faces that got switched. The method is a bit like replacing a tooth. Take the bad tooth out, put a false one in. Hmm. And actually, I think I can prove it to you. Traveler, Paimon, do you remember Eric from the other day? Yeah, sure do! 
Then you can be my witnesses. To start with, please fetch the inmate who claims to be Eric. You're... Eric? Yes, Head Nurse. It's me! You do believe me, right? <laughs> I need to do another examination on you. Same procedure as yesterday. Alright. It's the cognition test first, right? So I need to concentrate. Now, try to recall if you can. The last time we did this test, which finger did I hold up? Uh, I believe it was... your index finger. Uh, but that means... Uh huh? So, basically, last night, the Eric who said he saw another him suddenly recovered and applied to leave the observation ward. Seedwing did another test before letting him leave, but that time, she held up her pinky finger. Huh? Uh... I don't know about any tests last night. There was nothing to do in the observation ward, so I went straight to bed. Then I somehow woke up in a high security cell. Hmm. Well, in that case, there is a reasonable explanation for the strange events of the past two days. So, what exactly happened? The gang of serious offenders wanted to break out of prison, so they identified a group of scapegoats, namely inmates whose terms were almost up and plan to switch appearances with them. Last night, when Odilon was on duty, they ambushed him and had one of their group switch appearances with him using their face-swapping method. That allowed them to avoid scrutiny from the other guards. Then, once all the other inmates were asleep, Odilon spent his night shift carrying out the remainder of their switcheroo plan. However, they made one mistake. Henri changed his appearance to match Eric's earlier than he should have done, and ended up being spotted by the real Eric. Real Eric came to the guards for help, but we didn't know then what we know now. So we put it down to hallucination and sent him to the observation ward. However, since one of the gang members was posing as a guard, they simply changed real Eric's appearance and had their Eric take his place, muddying the waters even further. Right, because I put Eric on the observation list by then, and no inmates on that list can be processed for departure until I've discharged them. Hence why the imposters had to pull that little stunt to get fake Eric off the list. Yeah, it all makes sense now! The Duke cracked the case! Well, I can't fault the reasoning. But I'm afraid that we ruled out the possibility of face switching very early on in this process. Criminals altering their facial appearance to commit crimes is nothing new. In fact, one of the explicit duties of the Malazines in the Marashose Phantom is to identify criminals in disguise. We carefully examined all the suspects, and there is no evidence that any means of disguise were used in this case. Huh. Well then, how do we explain all this? So far, it seems more likely that the gang stole documentation belonging to the inmates due for release, and are using that to commit identity fraud. Mm. Actually, there is a potion that can completely change someone's appearance. If they use that, even a melazine wouldn't be able to detect it. A shape-shifting potion? Forgive me, head nurse, but this is the first time I'm hearing about it. If such a potion truly existed, it would jeopardize our entire investigative process at the Marachose Phantom. Are you certain of this? Yes, I am. But... Please, trust me in my professional opinion as an experienced clinician. At the same time, without any solid evidence, it's pure speculation. Hmm... If we can round up all the inmates suspected of switching places, then have a little talk with both sides, we might just get our answer. Yep, let's do that. Okay. Well, it was our negligence that meant we had to come and conduct these post-internment interrogations. And I know it's put you out. We'll do it your way. Your Grace, bad news. 
I paused the releases like you asked, but we were too late. A bunch of people already got processed two hours ago. I checked the list, and sure enough, it's all the people who gave statements. Two hours ago? That's before today's interrogations began. They had this all planned out. So, there really was a switch after all. <sighs> Duh. They really pulled the wool over our eyes on this one. We should be able to catch up with them if we leave now, right? Not if that potion is real. They can just switch faces again after leaving the fortress. And if the Marachosei's Melazines can't even spot them, we wouldn't know where to start searching. Yikes! So we're at a complete dead end! Well, technically there is one more lead we could follow up on. We were only able to arrest this gang thanks to the help of a researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute. I believe his name is Rawat. Oh? Rawat? Isn't that the handsome guy we met at that skincare promotion? Handsome? Uh, maybe from a human point of view. I just remember that he specialized in potions. One of the crimes this gang is charged with is the manufacture and sale of illicit drugs. According to Mr. Rawat, they appear to have stolen technology he developed through his research and used it in their operation. At first, he thought it was a typical case of intellectual property infringement and he tried to negotiate with them. But once he discovered their criminal operation, he reported them to the authorities. Thanks to his report, we were able to swoop in and arrest them all in one go. What a hero! But that took courage on his part! No doubt. This is worth following up on. As the one who snitched on them, it's highly likely that Rawat will be targeted by the escapees. That aside, since he's negotiated with them in person before, there's a chance he'll have some additional information for us. Understood, Your Grace. My team and I will head to the Fontaine Research Institute right away. In the meantime, please keep an eye on the face switch victims for us. Of course. Um, Miss Morgan, I'd like to come along and help you catch these criminals. Uh, huh? Why is that? Well, I'm the one who discharged the fake Eric last night, so I feel partly responsible. <sighs> Don't say that, head nurse. Your focus was on the inmates' health, and rightly so. We can't ask you to help with arresting criminals. That's our duty. Um, I also have a more personal reason. Potten is a patient of mine, and if I don't get a new batch of medicine to him in time, his condition will get much worse. <sighs> Look, head nurse, I completely understand where you're coming from. But arresting criminals is dangerous business. And if anything happened to you... None of us can afford to take on that responsibility. <laughs> Don't worry. I can defend myself just fine. <sighs> you say that. But still... If I may, Miss Morgan, Siegeween is the one who raised the potion hypothesis, and I'm sure she has far more expertise on the topic than your team. My suggestion would be to bring her with you. And if you really are worried for her safety, then... Ah, there you go, right on cue. Knew I could count on you. Okay. Well, since this plan has the Duke's blessing, far be it from me to refuse. We should head off immediately. Time is of the essence. <laughs>